Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hayes Long. I'm an artist and speed painter from Malaysia. And today we're going to be reviewing the XP Pen 24 Pro. So in this video, we're going to be covering the unboxing and reviewing some features, comparing it to Cintiq 24 Pro. And also we're going to do an installation and also I'm going to share with you my recommended setup for this unit. And after that, I'm going to do a demonstration as well. So a little bit of history before I get started. I've been using tablets since I was 13 years old and my first tablet I think was called a Wacom Graphite I'm not really sure but I've been using Wacom tablets until about a few years back where I completely swapped to the iPad Pro and using the iPad Pro has been so intuitive and I love using Procreate on iPad Pro so when XP Pen contacted me and told me they want to sponsor this unit to me in return for a review, I was so excited because I couldn't wait to see how it performs compared to an iPad Pro and also to my Wacom tablets that I used to have. So I'm really, really excited and let's jump right into the unboxing. Today I have a very big surprise for you guys. It's a 10.9 kg worth of surprise. In fact, let's get started and unbox this thing and I'll show you what it is. Oh my god, this is huge! <laughs> is it taller than me? Oh my god. Okay, I got it. That's a lever. And now let's review some of the features of this XP Pen 24 Pro. So I'm no longer struggling with the rotating display and I can just hold the handle back and snap it down as I find an angle that is suitable for my painting. Also, if you notice, the display here is a bit matte and it's not as vibrant. That's because there is a screen protector already applied onto the screen. The screen protector does not have a paper-like texture that we are used to with all the other matte screen protectors, but it's a bit matte and it still provides a little bit of grip for us to use and appreciate. And also now let's look at the box of accessories. First, we have the cables for connections. We have a choice of a USB-C cable and also a HDMI cable. And then we have the standard power supply brick and my box comes with both the US and UK plug. But when you purchase, you can actually choose one of them. There's a few booklets inside this accessory box. The first one is a quick guide. Please bear in mind that this is not the same as the manual. You can download the full manual in their website. And we also have a warranty card. A card containing useful download links, a thank you card and a cloth for wiping the screen. Then of course we have the stylus and also a cylinder holder which contains another spare stylus. Now you can also use this cover as a stylus holder on the table. And if you flip this container all the way back up, we will have our spare nibs. There's also a glove for us to use while we are drawing and finally a mysterious screwdriver. So this little gadget here that looks like a cable organizer plastic is actually a stylus holder that we can install at the side of our display here and this is where the handy screwdriver comes in. Right, there is actually a use for the random screwdriver. And now let's compare this XP Pen 24 Pro with the Cintiq 24 Pro, okay? Um, both of them are very, very similar and Cintiq 24 Pro is a direct competitor unit of this XP Pen 24 Pro. And you guys have to note that both of this unit does not have speakers. So if you're expecting sound to come out of your display, do not be surprised when there is no sound. It also comes with a lot of slots at the back and you can use the slots to put a speaker if you like. 
and both of them does not have an operating system installed which means you can't run apps on this uh, display this is pure just a monitor display and a drawing tablet it, you cannot run any apps and it does not have any play store or apple store unlike an ipad and both of these also does not have touch screen capabilities um, so if you're looking for something in this range that has touch screen capabilities you have to go for the cintiq 24 pro touch for this stylus, both of them comes with 8192 pressure sensitivity levels. So it's the same generic all round and it's quite similar. However, this does not have an eraser nib. Okay, it does not have an eraser nib. And also, this only provides a drawing capability to a 60 degrees tilt compared to a 40 degrees tilt on the Cintiq 24 Pro stylus. And both of the styluses also does not require batteries to work. <laughs> Speaking of the display, this display is a quad HD display, which means it's a 2K display, which is half of 4K. The Cintiq 24 Pro, however, is a full 4K display. So if you are particular about the uh, 4K versus 2K display, you can choose wisely when you purchase a product in this range. But to me, this is good enough. This is really, really huge. I don't need 4K display to be honest. Uh, and also, this runs on Adobe RGB 90%, where else the Cintiq 24 Pro runs on Adobe RGB 99%. So there's a lot of people who are hunting for Adobe RGB 100% monitors so that they can have a perfect accuracy when it comes to the colors and the artwork that they're working on but to me i don't really work so much on large format prints at this moment so i don't really need a high percentage of adobe rgb display at this moment so i think it's fine and now let's talk about the most important thing of all which is the price point price point for the steam tech 24 pro is is 1999 us dollars where else this is only 899 dollars and right now there's a discount i think which goes for 809 dollars only so this is actually a steal for the specifications and features that you get compared to the cintiq 24 pro and now let's talk a little bit about the setup and installation i'm connecting to a 13 inch macbook pro all i have to do is just connect it to a power supply and then put the usb-c cable in and connect it to both ends to turn on a unit all you have to do is to touch the power button and then if you tap the menu button here you will launch a menu where you can adjust the brightness the gamma and some of the color options to get out the menu all you have to do is to tap on the e button and now for the installation of the driver you can download the driver from their website and this is what you get when you download the driver there's three files here and if you look at the pdf file here it's actually step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this so the first thing you want to do is to uninstall any pen tablet drivers that you currently have in your system and then launch your system preferences and head to security and privacy go to the accessibility tab and make sure that there is nothing called pen tablet right here and also make sure that the input monitoring tab does not have any pen tablet settings as well if you still see any pen tablet settings just unlock it and delete it but if there's nothing you can just double click on the this image and then mount it then we can just go ahead and install this thing once it's installed you can see that in the input monitoring and accessibility tab of the security and privacy in system preferences have this pen tablet driver info and setting so if they are here then just make sure that they are checked but if they are not checked just unlock it and then make sure that they are checked remember that you need to do this for the accessibility and the input monitoring tab once you're done remember to lock it to save the changes and of course to make sure that everything is working nicely let's go and launch the pen tablet setting and now in the monitor tab you can see that we need to set our display first so let's go to the system preferences and tap on display so in the display tab in the arrangement um, sub tab so we can actually drag the screens around to arrange them however we like this will mean that our display is now spanned over two monitors or we can have the choice to mirror the display so that both screen is showing the same thing 
because my MacBook Pro screen is very small, it's hard for me to use both of them as extended displays. Once you have finished setting up the display, you realize that your stylus doesn't work. So to fix this, just go to the monitor tab and you see the color LCD is in red. So make sure the monitor mapping is set to your Artist 24 Pro or else every time you're using the stylus, it's just reflecting onto your other screen. Now head to the pen tab and test out the pressure here. Make sure that your pressure can easily reach about all the way to the right. So adjust the hardness and the softness as you like. Next, you can assign the buttons. Um, you can leave it to eraser because the stylus does not come with an eraser tip. And then of course, you leave one button for right click. Obviously, the next thing to do is launch Photoshop and test the stylus. And if your stylus has no pressure sensitivity to it, don't worry. Just launch system preferences. Head to the security and privacy tab and go to accessibility. Make sure that Adobe Photoshop is right there and it's checked. If it's not there, you can just hit the plus sign and add the app inside here. Remember to include Adobe Photoshop in input monitoring tab as well. Once you have done that, the pressure sensitivity should work. For my setup, you have to remember to get a keyboard to use for this because since the screen is so big, you have no space to actually put a laptop in front of you to use it at the same time as a keyboard or a trackpad. So make sure you get a keyboard. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit about this glitch that I was having, which is very weird because I've installed the driver about three or four times due to this glitch and I can't, for the life of me, replicate the glitch again to show you guys how it works but I've mocked up the glitch for you to see. So basically, this glitch happens when you just turn on your computer and your display and then after that, when you drag windows around, it staggers and it doesn't follow as fast. It times the lag and then when you try to use the stylus on a Photoshop document, the uh, strokes come out as dots instead of strokes so this is very very frustrating and I tried installing the driver again and again but actually I found a very very quick fix the quick fix is just to relaunch the pen tablet setting app and this will solve the problem immediately and now to demonstrate how I use this display together with my MacBook Pro I've been using this unit for about a week now and the first time that I was using it I was actually working on my accounts because it's the beginning of the month and for my accounts I have a huge spreadsheet of all the orders that I need to import into my accounting software and then this spreadsheet has so much data that I could not fit into my MacBook Pro tiny little 13 inch screen so using this um, display I could actually view all the data it was so amazing and life-changing and I actually cut down my bookkeeping time to about half the time it was a really great day for me because I'm usually so frustrated during accounting day but also there's something that I like to share with you guys because I was so used to using the iPad Pro all this while I kept thinking I could use touch screen on this and I've lost track of how many times I actually use my finger on this to zoom, to tap and to undo oh my god so many times I'm getting so frustrated at myself I would really really love if they come out with a touch screen version it would be great I'm telling you and also I have a secret I have to let you guys on. Um, I've been using Wacom tablets for so long, right? I've never, ever, ever, ever used the Express keys. But for this unit, because it's for review, I've decided to learn how to use the Express keys. So I was just setting up the Express keys and like taping down all the tools on the sides of the Express keys, thinking that maybe I can try and draw without the keyboard, but in the end, I still think that using a keyboard is best, but that's just me. Maybe you like to use the express key a bit more than I do. Also for the demo, I've decided to repaint this painting that I did in Procreate because I wasn't really, really happy with the portrait. I feel that it's very, very dull. So, and I tried using the XP Pen 24 Pro to do this. And I can say that I'm really, really happy with the result. This is sort of like a quick run through of what I did with the painting in Photoshop and some of the new brushes that I've created. And so far, I really like the result and how this turned out is really, really great. So to repaint this painting, I've actually recreated my Procreate Portrait Brush Pack in Photoshop and use it to repaint this. I've also imported all my color palettes from Procreate one by one to create shades so that I could use it for this painting as well. If you're interested in learning how to paint portraits in Procreate, you can always subscribe to my channel and watch my tutorials. I also give out free resources such as brushes and color palettes. 
The important question to ask me is, will I continue to use this product after this review? I think I would for really large artwork. So because you can see when I'm painting, I'm really moving my hand like really, really fast and in very big motions. So it's something like painting a small painting on a notebook compared to painting on a large canvas. This is like painting on a large canvas, right? If you like to work small, you can get a smaller one, but if you like to work big, this is your chance. This is a great, great start and it's so affordable you guys i cannot imagine having this at only 800 dollars basically it's every illustrator designers and artist dream to own a scene take one day right and now with the launch of xp pen display drawing tablet i think this is really really possible that it could come true Okay guys, that's it for the review. I hope you liked today's video. Are you curious about what Photoshop brushes I'm using for my painting? And are you curious about how the unfinished painting will look like? If you're curious, subscribe to my channel and watch my future videos. Um, like and comment. If you, I have any questions, just ask them in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching until the end guys. You guys are amazing. You're awesome. Thank you guys so much. Bye.